This R. Askredit user asks, if you were very rich, what things would you absolutely not buy? People. Rent instead. Be an employer. Oh. My. God. Employees are rented people. How have I never thought of that before? MLM products. I don't think rich people are buying MLM products. No. But they own the MLMs. A huge mansion I absolutely hate being alone in a house and especially in big houses so probably that. Plastic surgery. At the end of the day I love cats but would hate to look like one. A helicopter. Seems to be a common way for the wealthy to die. No. It's not that common at all. Flying in a helicopter is ranked significantly safer than normal vehicle travel. The ultra-wealthy love helicopters because they are very good at getting places very quickly. With very few limits. You don't need to worry about following roads. Having to go slightly out of your way because of the way the city is laid out. No traffic jams or slow downs. No stop lights. Etc. Kobe's helicopter should have never flown that day. It was weather conditions unfit for flight. Link. Anything off the dollar menu. Moving on up getting extra cheese on my quarter pounder. Young people's blood. I'd stop ordering from Amazon and start paying companies for overnight shipping instead. Now I want my own personal 24-7 concierge person. Amex Centurion Black Card. I hear you get the 24-7 concierge assigned to you. I heard that has a minimum $250,000 annual spending requirement. It is not for all rich people. Just ones they deem worthy. It's like Ferrari. Just because a person can afford one doesn't mean they will be able allowed to buy one. I will never buy diamonds they are just shiny coal and market scam. I'll probably not buy roses either. Winrar. A huge mansion. I'm kinda terrified of being alone in a huge building. Unless I could move my family in. But that's weird. I had a dentist whose office was in La Jolla. CA. A very rich community. He told me one of his patients was a billionaire. And she was telling him that they were building their dream house to retire to in Napa. He said he imagined a huge mansion. And she said, no. No. It's 1,000 square feet. Quote. I mean, on a vineyard with a ton of land. But she was tired of having servants around. And wanted a house she could clean and maintain herself. I never figured out how people have conversations with their dentists other than ah. Ah uhuha ahora ghgg. Hookers. Definitely wouldn't be buying high-end hookers. For real though. I wouldn't buy any frozen meals again. I would have my personal kitchen staff go buy fresh ingredients every few days and have a meal in the works and ready on time twice a day and I'd always have fresh fruit or snacks of some kind ready. Commercial plane tickets. Ever again. A boat. I always look at those NYC apartments near Central Park that cost like tens of millions of dollars and think, wow. If I had enough money to live there, I would absolutely not live there. I would buy some completely anonymous building in New York, less than 10 stories, and completely redo the inside into some absolutely unexpected living space that you had to reach by walking down an alley carefully made to look horrible and then through a completely anonymous door. Jackie Chan has something like that. Link. ODN. Secret rooms in secret rooms. Expensive cars. Don't want to advertise. Airplanes. Islands. Yachts. Drugs. Jewelry. I would stop buying toilet paper and get one of those Japanese robot toilets. The TP savings would offset the cost over time. Edit. I mean the like thousands of dollars high-end Japanese toilets like Toto makes with heated seats. Several bidet modes and it blow dries your ass with hot air not just any old bidet. And I wanted to say motivational phrases in Japanese to me as IPP. That's probably a custom order. I have a Toto. Worth literally every penny. I have a Toto. 
love it, but want to install a bidet. Any specific bidet you suggest for a Toto? Link. I have the S550e Modern. The S500e and S350e are other amazing models that spare some cost. All are amazing. It depends on which ones in your price range. But buy from Toto Washlet. They're the best. A mansion. Cars. Maybe an electric super environmentally friendly car though. A private jet. A yacht. Expensive designer clothes. Instead. I would live on the countryside in an old house that requires a lot of maintenance. I love that sort of work. With a bunch of pets. Own a good amount of forest. And I would just enjoy the silence. Have plenty time to write and sing and just sit and read books forever with my cow named Antonella mooing in the garden with the dogs running around her. Any car with a payment. Overly elaborate and expensive home renovation. Putting money towards good material is a good idea. But when you purchase stuff like Italian hand-carved wooden banister stained with eagle's tears and unicorn pee is just plain stupid and won't get you the return on investment. Back up a minute. I hear that unicorn pee keeps the nargles away. Uh-oh. Hang on a second I thought it was Raxperts. AFG Yatch Edit. Yacht. Boats in general are just so much trouble. A little John boat with a simple motor which fits into the back of my pickup that's about as far as it goes. Once you get into trailers and bank loans. I'm out. Kayak or canoe is also kinda chill. Yes. Very low maintenance and still lots of fun. A big house. I don't want to have a lawn to take care of. Or a bunch of extra rooms to clean and paying someone else to take care of st i never use is just a waste of money i'd love to hire a cleaning service for my home because fk cleaning but that would be for cleaning spaces i actually use dot supercars or garage queens cars are meant to be driven if i'm not comfortable taking it out on the road under normal conditions it ain't worth it I'd rather buy a nice car that's fun to drive on an actual road. Rather than something that's nerve-wracking and awful to drive on normal roads and only fun on a track. A boat. Another money pit that I'd barely use. Tigers or other exotic pets. Seems like a giant hassle and comes with a lot of risk. I also wouldn't buy t-shirts for $500 or any other expensive fashion nonsense. Politicians. You have to buy politicians in order to ensure nobody else can buy them. I'd buy as many as I can afford. Boat. New TS. I like the ones I've got. Non-first class plane tickets. Long flights suck. I've never been in first class and it looks comfy AF. Sometimes the airline I fly regularly. If they haven't sold all the first class tickets. They'll offer an upgrade at the gate for like $75. Before we had kids and we were tired of traveling. They had two seats left to upgrade and and we thought why not. Quote. And now every time I fly. I grumble to myself about how much coach sucks and I hate it. That little taste of luxury spoiled me. Elaine. Why should you get the first class? Jerry. Elaine. Have you ever flown first class? Elaine. No. Jerry. All right then. See? You won't know what you're missing. I've. Flown first class. Elaine I can't go back to coach. I can't. I won't. It is. It really. Really is. I know it's. Absurdly. Expensive but it is also worth it. And I hate it. However if you're flying with a large amount of people. Instead of going first class. It can actually be more cost efficient but not very environmentally friendly to fly private certainly not a big big house a series of small but interesting houses in my favorite places instead i agree i'd love to be able to travel to different places and still be able to live at home i don't need 10,000 square feet for just me lottery tickets 
if I were like Bezos rich, I'd use my money to avoid buying all the dumb st people buy and then sell when they go broke. Mansions, sports cars, jewelry, etc. I'd probably be like a doomsday prepper instead. A plot of land with a bunch of tiny homes. All with a secret bunker underneath that connects to a central bunker underneath the lovely sitting garden in the center of my tiny home ring. It'd be like that hatch from Lost but less creepy for whatever reason. IDK if that ST was ever explained because I never finished the show. I'd get everything delivered so I'd never have to drive. I'd hire drivers when I did need a car ride. I'd support my family and my family's families and invest and try to keep it running for as long as possible. And then, when I reach old age, I set up a Hunger Games type deal for ownership of the commune. Or freeze myself. Whatever. So a cult you'd start a cult haha. Ah. The Jared Leto approach. This comment contained the proper balance of cohesion and rant. Off the rack clothes. Except maybe some comfy underwear. I am getting myself a fleet of tailors and making all my clothes custom made. I have money to burn and ideas for designs. A. Fleet. Of tailors? Reminds me of. That family guy sketch. Well I'd buy you a green dress. But not a real green dress. That's cruel. Haven't you always wanted a mon? Key. I'd buy you some art. A Picasso or a Garfunkel. I had to explain that line to my wife. She thought Garfunkel was some painter she'd never heard of. Designer clothes. On the other hand, I would absolutely have clothes made and tailored specifically for me. I'd have it done by tailors. Jeans makers and shoemakers to help support small businesses. I'd do the same with custom tailors. But I'd go all out. Like. I wanna look like I just stepped out of the Met Gala when I go grocery shopping. Bespoke everything. Drugs and hookers. Don't buy drugs. Become a pop star and they give you them for free. You should be those people who come into schools and give inspirational messages. It's not buy, not buy immediately with no second thought. A gigantic mansion that could house my entire extended family and still feel empty. Same for gigantic yachts. Like, what's the point? And they're so huge that you can't actually decorate it yourself. So you can't even personalize it. You just hire someone else to fill it with CP so you don't feel like you're living in an empty warehouse. My stepdad's best friend happened to make a shitload of money and owns a small mansion. Whenever they would have us over when I was younger I was really impressed by how much space that house had that wasn't used. They basically used the kitchen, which was approximately the size of my entire house, living room, and patio. The house had something like 10 bedrooms, a movie theater, a formal dining room, a sitting room, three offices, and an indoor pool, all for two people. It was remarkably well decorated, but was so huge it still felt sparse despite the best efforts put in to make it feel lived in and homey. They had something like five acres of land around the place and the guy collected vintage cars. He showed me the collection once and while impressive. He didn't drive them very often because he didn't want to risk damaging the paint. They had part of the house converted to an apartment where they housed another family friend for several years before he died. Dunno the details there. They had a huge apartment built above the garage the car collection was in where their youngest daughter and her family lived rent free. They often threw huge parties. Which was usually when we got invited over. 30 plus people is what it took to make that place feel populated. It was always fun. A bunch of 55 plus folks hanging around who had known each other since they were kids. And their families. I would often wind up talking Star Wars and dinosaurs with some of the grandkids like they were my nieces and nephews. We'd pile into the theater to watch movies. Then everyone could stay the night and everyone got their own bed if not their own room. I often wonder what the place was like on a normal day with just the two of them at home. Made me depressed. And made me realize why they were always having people over.
mansions are such a holdover from a different era. When upper class people had regular social occasions like it was their job and invited guests for the weekend. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more videos.